beginning, he also became a teacher at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. He was up at 4 a.m., making rounds with his students at 5 a.m. until breakfast at 7. Some of the patients would be asleep when he entered their rooms, and with a smile and a loud greeting, Good morning! Some of his patients greeted him that way years later. At 7.30, he was in the operating room. He never got tired of that routine. If he wasn't operating or teaching, he was doing research. He was fascinated by gastroenterology, which he was teaching, and he used every spare moment performing countless intestinal transplants on dogs, along with Dr. Jim Hardy, the department head. As time passed, his students became practicing surgeons throughout the state. With their frequent referrals, Dr. Barnett's private practice grew, along with his spotless reputation. So in 1963, after nine years of teaching, he quit the university and concentrated solely on his private practice. It was a risky move because there were some 20 surgeons competing for patients in Jackson. And by now, he and Dolores had three children, Martha, John, and James. And of course, back in the old days when I was, you know, like in elementary school, um, I remember, you know, he would come, he would, he would hardly even stop. Mother be in the kitchen fixing dinner. He'd head straight back to, um, you know, take off his jacket and everything. A lot of times he'd get his pajamas on. He'd sit down and have dinner, and then he was off to bed because he got up so early. One day, a doctor on the university staff called and said his mother had cancer of the stomach and he wanted Dr. Barnett to do the surgery. You'd better get Dr. Hardy to do it, Dr. Barnett said. He's not gonna like it if you get me to do that. The doctor replied, yeah, but all of Dr. Hardy's dogs died. Weeks later, Dr. Barnett got a call that would change his life dramatically and the lives of thousands of future patients. A gastroenterologist from South Jackson said he had a lady who had ulcerative colitis and would have to have her colon removed. She wanted to have a Coke pouch, a controversial procedure pioneered by Dr. Niles Koch of Sweden in the 1960s. I knew about the Coke pouch, but I had never done one, Dr. Barnett wrote in his autobiography. I knew where the library was, so I read everything on that surgery that you could think of. There had been only about 15 or 16 done in the country at the time, and the reported rate of failures, 25 to 40 percent, was not encouraging. But on May 21, 1979, Dr. Barnett performed the surgery for the first time for Betty Donnell, 43 years old, a pretty lady who had ulcerative colitis for 15 years and was now in a critical state of health. My name is Betty Donald, and in 1979, I was 43 years of age. I had suffered with ulcerated colitis for 15 years and only weighed 79 pounds. My GI doctor told me that I wouldn't have much longer to live if I didn't have a colostomy. I had almost given in. Then my GI doctor told me that a pouch could be placed inside of me and if it worked, it would be a different lifestyle. As it happened, God stepped in and put Dr. Barnett in my life. I was told the doctor had done three of these surgeries, but they didn't tell me it was on dogs. Either way, it didn't matter. I became Dr. Barnett's first BCIR surgery patient and I survived. I saw Dr. Barnett often after my surgery. I would go to his office and we would talk about it and talk about the things that I would change. I remember once telling him that I would not recommend this surgery to anyone until a catheter could be found that would be used without hurting people. And he did that. I am now 74 years of age and thanks to the late Dr. William Oscar Barnett and the BCIR procedure, I have enjoyed my life and do just about anything that I choose to do. His first case was a success. 
and he was ecstatic. He quickly did four more coke pouches and he knew he was onto something. Because one of his first five operations failed, he made changes in the procedure that would lower the failure rate dramatically and place his name in medical journals forever. His modified procedure would soon be known as the Barnett Continent Intestinal Reservoir. My name is Dr. Don Schiller. I'm here at Olympia Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. I've been involved with the BCIR Continent Ostomy Program here in Los Angeles since 1989, continuously and without interruption. I first began practice and with a senior colleague in the early 1980s did coke pouches, but we stopped doing them because of a high failure rate. In 1989, I learned about Dr. Barnett's work and went to Florida to learn about the procedure and see him doing the Barnett pouch procedure. My first impressions were that this was an improvement on the coke pouch and that the modification that Dr. Barnett had created was unique and made a good deal of surgical sense. I did not have reservations about the procedure, especially after meeting with Dr. Barnett. He was a unique individual, both as a surgeon and a teacher. He had a long list of questions for me as an interview. And of course, he had a long list of steps of the procedure as well as a manual. I spent time learning from him and as I continued to do the procedure in Los Angeles, in the early stages, he came to visit and be in the operating room during the operations. I was aware of the controversy about continent ileostomy surgery in America. Initially, there was great enthusiasm for this operation, but the original Coke pouch had a high failure rate, and many specialists in gastroenterology and surgery lost their enthusiasm. Thanks to Dr. Barnett and his innovative modifications, this procedure has become certainly mainstream. By the mid-1980s, Dr. Barnett had done well over 100 of the procedures and was developing new, more reliable methods and material to improve the procedure along the way. The BCIR was highly popular among ulcerative colitis patients who now had an option to the external pouch. But despite the success, hardly anyone outside of Mississippi knew about the new procedure, and many of the GI surgeons around the country who did know about it were highly critical and insisting that the procedure was not dependable. One doctor was so irate he tried to have Dr. Barnett's license suspended. Others spoke out against him and refused to recognize the BCIR or to tell their patients that it was an option. Dr. Barnett was faced with an enormous decision. He was in his 60s, had a busy practice doing hernias, gallbladders, kidney stones, and could easily coast into a comfortable retirement in Jackson. Am I stupid, he asked himself. I could go home and go to sleep and forget it. But he couldn't, and he didn't. He had seen the happiness his procedure had brought to his ulcerative colitis patients who would never have to wear the uncomfortable, unsightly exterior bag. He could make thousands more just as happy, and he couldn't forget that. Barnett, he said to himself, do you want to do a few of these BCIRs around Jackson, or would you like to go at it on a national basis? On a November morning in 1984, Dr. Barnett decided to weather the wrath of his colleagues and let the people know. He hired a New York-based advertising firm and was soon appearing on national TV and radio talk shows. Newspapers picked up the story, and BCIR exhibits were set up at medical conferences across the nation. He traveled the country telling the BCIR story, sometimes with patients, sometimes with... I had my first operation, uh, the Brook, at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia in 1983. Um, at, ulcerative colitis just came up on me very suddenly. I was 50 years old, and it, it struck me very hard. It uh, went from zero to uh, critical in like three months. So I had the Brook operation at the University of Pennsylvania and came home with the appliance on my abdomen and I thought I was going to be that way the rest of my life and it was a, quite an adjustment. Um, my sister happened to hear uh, Dr. Barnett on the Gary Collins show call me 
and I called Dr. Barnett in Jackson immediately. He came to the phone. I was in Jackson in six weeks, and I, I had the BCIR. I knew Dr. Barnett was special the day I got home after my operation. I flew home from Jackson to Philadelphia, and the next morning, early, bright and early, the phone rang, and it was Dr. Barnett. How are you? What's going on? He wanted to know all the details, how my trip was, uh, if, he, if I needed anything. Next morning, same thing. Good morning, it's Dr. Barnett. And that, that went on for days. I knew then it was special because I had never had a doctor in my life do that. I had ulcerative colitis for about 10 years, and then I had a brucheliostomy um, in the early 70s and had that for about 10 years. And then I learned of the BCIR, and so uh, I had my surgery in uh, May of 1985. And while I was in the hospital for that 21 days after I had uh, gotten over the immediate post-op phase of it, one day Dr. Barnett walked into my room and he said, um, Velma, what do you think about starting an organization for these patients who've had this BCIR? And I said, well, Dr. Barnett, there's, alway, there's already um, a United Ostomy Association uh, organization. And uh, he says, yes, but what about the continent patient? And I says, well, I think that's a great idea. And so he says, uh, will, you help me, will you help me do this? And I said, of course I will. And so after that, he went over to his office and he met Kay Slimmer in the hallway, who was his administrative assistant at his office. And he walked up to her as she approached him in the hall and he said, Kay, congratulations. You are now the executive director of the Quality Life Association. And she said, okay, sir, because nobody could tell him no. And so she'd say, okay, sir, but what is the Quality Life Association? Uh, I thought it was a great idea. And uh, so I said, yes, uh, but I don't know uh, any of your patients because I was, I was new on the horizon. And he said, well, that's not a problem. We will get a group together if you will help me get it organized. And I told him that I would. And so he brought a cluster of his people together and we would meet over in his office after I had recuperated from surgery, of course. And uh, so, as I said, no one would ever tell Dr. Barnett no for anything. And so there was no voting on officers or board. He announced who you were. And so at our first little meeting, he said, uh, Velma, you will be president. Trish, you will be vice president. Um, Carolyn, you will be secretary. Uh, Betty, you will be treasurer. Uh, Sherry, you will be recording secretary. And for our members at, lar at large, he called it at that time, he said, we'll be Jay Searcy, DeWitt Dixon. Well, I'm Donnie Turney Wright. Um, everybody knew me as Donnie Turney when I was the coordinator of the Conant Ostomy Center. And um, I came to know Dr. Barnett in 1987. A friend of mine was a nurse at the hospital I was working in, and she had gotten some information regarding the BCIR, and she was very interested because she did, like I said, have the ileostomy, and she, she hated it, so she wanted to do something different. So she asked me would I call Dr. Barnett and see if he would come to our um, hospital and uh, give a talk or to the medical staff there and so that very day I called him and when you know it he answered the phone and when he answered the phone I just about fell out of my chair because I didn't know what to say but anyway we I asked him would he be interested and he was absolutely more than interested in coming and we set a date that day and um, when he came here he spoke to the medical staff they were very um, open and enthusiastic about the procedure. They, most of them had never really heard of his procedure. So they, um, they asked a lot of questions and we had several nurses that did come along with my friend. She came to just to see what he had to say. And she talked to him after the meeting and said, Dr. Barnett, I want to come and have this, this surgery done. And the first thing that popped into my head was, well, we need to tell other people about this. There's not enough surgeons that know about this procedure. We need to train some more surgeons to do this. And at first, he wasn't real keen on it. He's like, maybe, you know, people don't want to talk about stuff like that, your ileostomy and all of these things. And I said, well, I mean, it's a true, it's a fact, you know. And so 
he agreed to talk to Dr. Barnett. He asked me to do 